Hi, and welcome to this week's VIP lesson. This week, we are going to check out um, this girl drummer, Anika Nillis. I don't know if that's how you pronounce her name. She's German. Um, I saw her YouTube video called Alter Ego recently, and I thought she was playing some pretty cool stuff in it. So I've basically been through and transcribed all the cool bits. Uh, so you'll find the transcriptions for those in the bonus material for this lesson. So what I suggest is you print those out and go through them with me. Um, I'm basically going to show you my approach to learning them. Uh, and you know we're going to pick out the things from them that I think are particularly cool. Um, one thing I want to talk about before we get into that is how this kind of thing comes around. You know, I saw this video and I was really impressed with what she was doing. The fills seemed really imaginative and really well executed. Um, and I kind of assume when I see things, you know, people playing along to tracks that they sit down and play a take and they're improvising. Um, but I know from personal experience that this isn't so easy. Uh, if you remember in the, the lesson with the American Century play along, I said, you know, that's what I did to begin with was just try to wing it and hope that cool fills came out. But I ended up going away and composing some fills. Uh, and for that album, I, I ended up doing lots of takes because I didn't compose them all. I, I jammed a lot of them, but it was multiple takes that we stitched together to come up with the final version. Now, if we were to play that live, I would transcribe what I'd played and so I at least had a basis, you know, I could, I knew, I would know every single fill that I played on the record, so I could do that live, and then as I got more comfortable, I could start to experiment with other things. But the point is that this video um, that we're going to look at, I've seen an interview with her, and the way that she works is she composes the music, uh, you know, in a sequencer, and then she composes the drum parts in the sequencer too, so that means you can sit down and go, what would be a cool fill to play here? Try this, try this, and you're basically just programming things in until you find something that you like the sound of, and then you go and learn it, like it's a composition, you know, you go and learn what you programmed, and then it's a case of executing it well. Now, uh, there are some videos of me playing the I'm Tweaked solo, and uh, specifically one on YouTube of playing an outro of seven days, um, you know, with lots of cameras. That was one camera. And because I'd learned, I'd transcribed the outro and I'd learned to play it note for note, we just did like 20 takes and shot from different angles for each take. And we, the reason we could piece them together is because I was playing exactly the same thing every time. Even though it's a complex sounding piece of music, I had learned those note for note. Now Vinny, when he played it, he was improvising a lot of the stuff and just nailing what he did. But a lot of the cool ideas in there will be things that he'd worked on before, concepts at least. So. Just keep that in mind while we go through this track. Um, you know, these aren't, it's not completely improvised. She's basically composed these bits. But what we're going to do is steal the best bits and figure out what makes them cool, and then we can use them in our own vocabulary. So here she is, um, Anika, Anika. Um, I've transcribed, like I say, the fills that I think are cool. And the, the method I used was the same as I used for transcribing the Chris Coleman solo and the Gary Novak solo. I put it into Cubase and I lined, this was easy because it's to a click track, so I lined it up and then I just looped bars and drew in the drums. Um, I had to slow some of these things down and I slowed it down in video, I actually did it in Final Cut Pro, um, slowed the video down to half speed so I could see the sticking that she was using because you'll find there's a lot of things in here that are left hand lead and also to identify which toms were being played because it's sometimes hard to tell in a mix. So. I'm basically, oh, well, my son and Noah's there. <laughs> I'm going to go through the fills as I've got them. Uh, we'll see how far we get today. If I don't fit them all in this lesson, then we'll do the rest of next week. We're going to start off with a fill that happens at 20 seconds in. So let's check out the song from the beginning. So that's kind of a nice groove anyway. Okay, here comes the fill. Okay, now then, I, you might immediately know what that is, or you might think it sounds crazy. That fill there is the reason I did the lesson on quintuplets a few weeks back. It's a quintuplet fill, and I'd only really heard Vinny and Virgil Tonati play fills in quintuplets before, um, so it was cool to see this girl playing a fill in quintuplets that sounded pretty cool. If I had seen this video before I recorded the last Wishbone Ash album, there would have been a whole lot more quintuplets on that album. Um, so basically, 
the fill, you can probably almost play it. If you um, have worked through the quintuplet lesson, I actually played that fill in the lesson. So, what it is, is five over two. So you've got one, yeah, and a two, yeah, and a three, yeah, and a four, yeah, and a one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five. That's the, the tempo. Da, good do. Do, da, do, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five. All right? And basically, the, the cool thing about this is that the sticking, it's foot, left, right, left, right. Now, I would have been tempted to play foot, right, left, right, left. But playing left, right, left, right opens up different possibilities. So basically, that's it. Foot, left, right, left, right, foot, left, right, left, right. And she goes two on the snare, foot, left, right, tom, tom. And then foot three on here, left, right, left, right. Three on there, down to this tom. So it's nice because it works down the toms. Um, you have the three notes on this floor tom, which I like the sound of. Do good, do good, Foot left, right, left, right. If you wanted to crash, you'd have to come over with the left hand. Um, so yeah, that's the first thing that I noticed was quintuplets. I never play quintuplets. Left hand lead, I rarely do that. So that's two cool things that we can steal. So I'm going to play the left foot. I'll play a, a groove. Do do get do 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 get, and then I'll play the fill. But I'll do it a little slower than she does, and I'll also step the um, quarter note. Yeah, I'll play four on the hi hat, and you'll see how those five notes, the, the middle hi hat, the two and the four on the hi hat, don't line up. You get in that one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, and four, five, one, two, three, and four, five, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five. So I'm not going to spend any longer on that. You have the transcription. I've played it slowly. We did this in the quintuplet lesson, so hopefully that was enough to explain it. Um, otherwise, we'd spend the whole lesson on this fill. But I just think that's a cool use of quintuplets. All right, next up is a fill that happens at 31 seconds into the video. Um, and let's have a list of that. Okay, so that's nice because we've gone from um, a straight groove dun 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 into triplets. Okay, so the fill, I'll put it on the screen. Basically, you've got right, left, right, left, left, right for the first half. Right, left, right, left, left, right. And the accents are on the letter of the triplet. One triplet, two triplet. Okay, da, 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 da. and then left, right, foot, foot, right, left. So personally, for me, the thing that's interesting in, in that is having the right, left, right. So basically, if you look at the second half of the bar, left, right, foot, foot, right, left. So I wouldn't naturally play that. I would be playing uh, something like right, left, right, left, left, right, left, foot, foot. I would have the foot in there. or something like that. Um, so this was a new, a new one for me. So one more time. 
One, two, three, two, two, three, three, two, three, four, two. And that one will leave you um, with your right hand free to crash, but you're down here, so. All right, so that's that fill. The next one we have is a fill that happens at 37 seconds. This is the times as per the video on YouTube. Okay, now that's a pretty simple one. Um, I couldn't tell if she was playing, if, if she played double ghost notes, which would be right, left, left, but right, left, left, but like this. Then that's kind of fairly simple. I liked the sound of it. So this is the full fill. Right, left foot, well, play it with the double left. Right, left, left foot, right, left, left foot, left foot, right, left. But I'm not sure she plays a, a double left. I think she goes right, left foot, right, left foot, left foot, right, left. And this is actually harder to play. It's a tricky little one. So the way I would approach making this solid, because what's important is to, ha to have this really like metronomically accurate. So the first thing I do is look at the eighth notes on this. So that's right, left, right, left, left, foot, right, left. So we're getting rid of the bass drums that are on the out of one and two and just playing the eighth notes. Okay, now in order to play this well, what we need to do is get ready for that backbeat. So that second left is going to be like an upstroke. Okay, however you're going to play your upstroke, you just got to be prepared to play that backbeat with your left hand. If you leave it lingering down here, that it will end up being late. And then we've got to add the bass drums on the ah uh, after the left hand. So you want to do that without making this into triplets, you know, because you could play that as triplets, right, left foot, right, left foot. But it's straight. It's not digga da digga da digga digga. It's da digga da digga da 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 da. So I think the trick here is practicing playing eighth notes, right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left, and putting the bass drum in on the ah, so after the left, before the right. Not so good. Let's see what it sounds like on the toms. See, I started off okay, but there's a tendency for that bass drum to pull away and not be quite in the middle. Um, so I think that's a good exercise to work on. I'm going to be working on that. Right, left foot, right, left foot, right, left foot. Just getting used to throwing in a single bass drum in the middle in those syncopated places. So then the full fill. Simple, but difficult. All right, the next one's pretty cool, and this one happens at 40 seconds in. So let's have a listen to that. Okay, did you get that? I, I watched that the first time, and I'm like, well, I know it's in triplets. Uh, that was about as far as I got. So if you check out the transcription for this one, um, there's the cowbell in there played, I've got it over here, played with the left hand. Um, but look at the, the sticking. You've essentially, if we look at that first bass drum, 
and we imagine that was a right hand, right? You, then you've got right, left, left foot, 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 and then at the end, right, left foot, right. So that's basically a bunch of groups of four notes, but played over triplets. So this is where it gets really interesting, because it's, uh, it's kind of implied time, all right? So what I mean is, if I was to just play right, left, left foot in 16th notes, then that's really easy fill. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to, and I want you to try this, is play four bars of groove, stepping the hi-hat on the quarter note, and then four bars of right, left, left foot, still stepping the hi-hat on the quarter note, and we'll play the right, for example, on the ride cymbal, but in triplets, okay? Um, so I'll write it out so you can see how it all lines up, but basically, the trick here is to count the quarter notes out loud. You're going to count one, two, three, four, two, two, three, four, three, two, three, four, four, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, two, two, three, four, three, two, three, four, four, two, three, four. So it's four bars, and it's going to be one triplet, two triplet, three triplet, four triplet. When we do the fill, that's I'm going to be playing triplets. One triplet, two triplet, three triplet, four triplet. But I'm going to do this now, and you count along while you're watching the video. I'll start you off, right? Um, and just keep counting that one, two, three, four, to count the bar where I'm playing the fill so you can check I come in the right place. So we got one, two, three, four, two, two, three, four, three, two, three, four, four, two, three. Okay, so I was digga da digga da digga da that went into triplets, but playing four note groups. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Okay, so the next step is to play, is to alternate the right hand going between uh, the ride cymbal and a backbeat on the snare drum. So right, left, left foot, right, left, left foot, right, left, left foot, right, left, left, like this. And again, you've got to count the hi-hats because we want to know when one or two bars is up. So I'll play two bars. So that's basically going to set you up to be able to play this little fill. So the actual orchestration of the fill goes like this. So you hopefully understand what's going on there. Um, it's just a tricky thing to practice, but you can get more familiar with it by playing groups of four over triplets. So one more approach might be to uh, just play a groove and play triplets, but four strokes per drum, like this.
One, two, three, four, 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 one. Next up, we have something coming at 47 seconds, which is here. Okay, so this isn't difficult. The reason that I pinpointed this one is I like the focus on really nailing the kick with the cross stick. So you've got this uh, accented eighth note, one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and, and you've got the kick and the cross stick on three and you've got to really lock those together, no flams here. And that can be pretty difficult. So what I've transcribed here is not exactly what she plays. It's kind of a, a mishmash of two halves of this thing. But essentially, this is what I've written out. I just liked how that cross stick and the hi-hat fit together at the end. But that's pretty simple. Um, so we shall move on to one minute and seven seconds. Okay, so that's the first one. So the fill is pretty simple there. And it goes... Foot, left, right, left, left, right, left. That's the first half. So really, you're just thinking accents. One, and, two, e, and. But we're filling in the ghost notes. So with just the accents. Okay, but with the left hand ghost notes. And then the second half is just foot, foot, right, left, right, left, right, left. I think I've written it all on one tom. I'm not sure what she plays it on. But the, the secret here is to play loud open strokes on the toms. Whatever it is, it's just a case of being you know, nice and even and loud with those toms. If you're weak on those hits, it won't sound good. Because basically, it's like it's supposed to sound like just an other bass drums. You know, the bass drum and the toms have got to be at the same level. Straight after that, we get into the fill, which is um, the kind of orchestrated chorus fill that she plays a few times. So you can tell she's really definitely worked this one out. So. Okay, so what I like about this fill, there's a whole bunch of things that I like about it. It's four bars long. Um, it starts off with straight ahead, crash, open hat, and then you have this thing, you've got a backbeat played with the right hand, which allows you to go into an inverted paradiddle diddle on the hi-hats. So right, left, left, right, right, left, which leaves your right hand ready to come on the downbeat. So I'm just gonna loop that first bar. So that's something that we can easily steal. Any groove that you've got going on, you can just stick a right hand backbeat in to, to allow you to play that nice inverted paradiddle. Now one thing, if you don't play the open hi-hat, I kind of miss the hi-hat on beat two. If you play the right, you know, if you're going one and two like that, 
then you've got a hi-hat and snare drum on every backbeat. But when we come across with the right hand, there's no hi-hat. So in this particular instance, you had an open hi-hat on the two, which means that you close it on beat three and, and you have that with the backbeat. Now you could do that even without an open hi-hat. Anyway, moving on. We flow straight into the second bar, which leads with the right hand on the hi-hat. And what I like here is you've got this fill, but there's no, you know, the bass drums come in on the trip and the let of the triplets. And the one is just a hi-hat on its own, which is an unusual thing. So basically you've got uh, one triplet, two triplet, three and four. So I also like this switch from triplets to eighth notes. One triplet, two triplet, three and four. Da -ga -da -da -ga -da 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 -da. It's kind of, uh, it feels like something that's slowing down. So the first two lines. All right, I was, I'm looking now at the sticking, which is a left hand backbeat, um, just to try and play it as she was playing it. I did a few with the right hand, whatever. Um, that's the first bit. And then the second half of this film, digga 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 bap, which goes with the guitar, did a little 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 up, is a left hand lead thing again. So I'm wondering if she's ambidextrous or even left handed because a lot of these fills start with the left hand and that's nice. So basically you've got four notes down the toms left, right, left, right, and it's, she's got three toms, so you're going left, right, left, right, and then you've got foot, foot, right, foot, and then left, foot, right, left, okay, so like this. So it's actually not that difficult to play, and the sticking, the left hand lead sticking, makes it easy um, to get this foot, foot, right foot thing in there as well. So I'll speed that up a little bit. So the trickiest bit is probably that bass drum. Um, but it's not as difficult as it sounds to play. And then the last line is just an open hi-hat and then kick, kick, snare, da, 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 da. So the last line. Okay, so it's a nice, just little fill. So from the top. I think that's nice. Um, okay, so I'll leave you with that. Um, I think I'll leave it there for this lesson because I know people were not necessarily liking the sort of 40 minute lessons and this is probably half an hour or so already. So we'll come back to the rest of the fills in this video next week. Um, there's plenty there to be playing with. What I suggest is you learn them like she's played them, but then you start thinking about the concepts and I've kind of done my best to expand on those, but you know, just taking the left hand lead thing or certain ways that she plays things or mixing up triplets and eighth notes um, and come up with your own stuff based around that. Uh, you know, see how you can fit these things into different styles, what tempos you feel comfortable playing these things. And you know, that will do more for your playing and for your vocabulary than just learning these outright for no reason. I mean, there's no point in it unless you're gonna play along to this particular song and stick them all in there. So you gotta find ways to extract the cool stuff and steal it. So have some fun with that and next week we'll look at the rest of this song. Thanks for watching, I'll see you next week.